things. Uh, it's not just schizophrenia. I keep talking about schizophrenia and bipolar disorder and things. It's not just those things. It also can be uh, things like dementia. Uh, different forms of dementia can do it. Delirium, drugs like LSD, um, you know, other hallucinogens, methamphetamine, cocaine, um, mood disorders. You can have just plain depression, major depression with psychosis. Um, you can have bipolar disorder and get manic or depressed and, psycho and have psychosis. Um, there's a whole bunch of things, and I'll, and I'll go into some of the others uh, here in a moment um, to, to give you an idea. The other question you might ask yourself is who, and, and I want to scare you with this stuff, but who, who can be psychotic? Can you, do you think any of you guys could get psychotic? If you have a brain, which I think most of you probably do, you guys could all become psychotic. Remember we talked, I don't know if some of you weren't here then probably, but we talked about how anyone can become depressed. It's just a matter of like, you know, how easy it is for you to get depressed is the, is the issue. Some people it's not easy at all. They take, it takes a ton of stress to become depressed, okay? Other people it's day-to-day -day life and they become depressed. And that has to do probably with your wiring and your upbringing and everything else. The same thing is kind of the case with psychosis, right? So based a little bit on your wiring and based on your environment, you, it's either really easy to get psychotic, and that would be somebody like schizophrenia, like somebody with schizophrenia. With schizophrenia, these folks, day-to-day -day stressors um, are enough to make them psychotic. So they really have to take treatment, have to get treatment, or they're psychotic. And, it's, it's, uh, and that's tough. That's a very tough illness. We'll talk about it in a minute. But any of us could become psychotic. It's just a matter, it's, just, it's different for each of us as to how much it would take. Let's give an example, sort of the opposite extreme. So you have a schizophrenia person who's wired in a way that just a little bit of stress and they become psychotic. What about the other extreme? Um, you hear about sometimes folks that have no history of psychosis at all, but now they've become a prisoner of war and they're stuck in a pit somewhere where they don't get any, any sensory input. So they don't get, they can't see anything, it's dark in there. They can't hear anything. And that goes on for days to weeks, right? Their brain, they, they will start to become psychotic. They will start to see things and, and hear things um, uh, because their brain, you know, the way I think of it is the brain has nothing to do. And it starts to, it starts to exercise itself, so to speak. I don't, I mean, that's very simplistic and may not even be the case. But, uh, but you know, that's the way I think about it. Um, so the, the gist of it is anybody can become psychotic. Uh, well, think about LSD as another one. You know, a lot of people, when they use LSD, are going to become psychotic. You know, it's just the, what, that's what that does in your brain. And, and all of this, again, all of this comes down to the brain. All of this stuff is caused by certain pathways in the brain that either are, are abnormal to start with or are, are made abnormal by LSD or by stress or something else. Um, so, you know, not to scare you all, but any of us could become psychotic. So just something to keep in mind. So I guess the, the key there is what, I should, what you should realize. And the reason I give these talks, you know, is that we all have brains. So you, you should never look at somebody and say, oh, look at that wacko, he's, you know, he's talking to no one, and things like that, you know, or look at that crazy guy. You know, you don't, just be careful saying that stuff, because that could be you in three days, okay? Um, you know, I get kind of passionate about that stuff, you know, I, but, uh, but that's a part of the reason I do these talks, I guess, is so that folks realize that stuff. Now let's go into, um, let's go into schizophrenia for a second. Uh, have you guys heard of schizophrenia? I'm sure most of you have heard of it, right? Most of the time, it seems like people always think that's, that's a, like a split personality or a multiple personality. You've heard that before, Pat. And folks say that a lot, I guess. It's really not, and I'm not sure where that, do you know where that comes from? I'm not sure the history of that. But I mean, it's not really, it's not that case. It's not the case. It's not multiple personalities or anything like that. Um, what we think it is, well, what it is symptom-wise is that it, for at least six months, a person has um, symptoms of psychosis. It's usually, it kicks in in the late teens to early 20s. Uh, it can be a little later for women than men. But these folks usually have some type of stressor, and then they start becoming psychotic. And that, that's what these hallucinations and delusions that I just talked about. They'll start to think that the FBI is out to get them, there's a transmitter in their head. I say that when I, I use that example again because it's kind of common. But they can be, it can be different things. Um, this, in addition to that, and depending on the different, there's different types of schizophrenia, but depending on the type, they can also be very disorganized in their behavior. They can't really focus very well on stuff. They have a hard time, like, thinking about what I need, you know, going to the grocery and figuring out, okay, I need this for Monday for meals and this for Tuesday for meals and so on. They can't do that very well, so they don't eat very well, don't take care of themselves very well, don't remember to shower. Um, and so, it, as you can tell, it really interferes with function. And remember, with psychiatric illnesses, most every psychiatric illness, for, for us to say that it's a disorder, it has to interfere with your function. 
right? I mean, if it's not interfering with your function, maybe it's still a disorder, but it isn't, it's not something that we're going to call a disorder because it's, you're able to function okay with it. Now, in this case, as you can imagine, this really interferes with day-to-day -day function. Um, you have to rule out any other psychotic disorder for it to be, for you to be able to say it's schizophrenia. So if a person just took LSD, and this is the hardest part, because you get these young folks, they come in and they're 18, 19 years old, they're experimenting with drugs like a lot of kids do, and, and next thing you know, they're psychotic. And now you've got to scratch your head, okay, now they used LSD, now is this going to clear up, or are they going to continue to have this? And if they continue to have it, that's where the six-month thing comes in. You don't want to just say they have schizophrenia after three days because it could be the LSD, right? So you wait and you, and you kind of follow them over time. And if after six months they haven't cleared up and they're still not, you know, they haven't used for that much time, that's when you start wondering, gosh, is this something like schizophrenia or some other psychotic illness? Um, but you have to rule out other things too, uh, other psychotic disorders that we're going to talk about in a minute. Now there's different types of schizophrenia. There's paranoid type, which sort of sounds like what it is. I mean, these folks have a lot of the hallucinations and delusions, paranoia especially, but they don't seem to be as bad as far as being disorganized in their speech and their behavior. Uh, then there's the disorganized type, which is sort of the opposite. These folks aren't quite as paranoid, aren't quite as, they don't hallucinate quite as much, but they, they are very disorganized and very, uh, these, these are interesting folks because they'll, you'll talk to them and it's, they're making words, I mean, you can hear the words, but they don't make any sense and you can't follow them very well. So that's the disorganized type. Catatonic type. You ever heard of catatonia? Anybody heard of that? That's a fascinating thing. Um, we don't know what really causes that, but it's almost like the person checks out. They're on a different plane of existence or something. They they don't talk very much. If they do talk, they just sort of repeat what you say after what you after you. Sometimes they repeat your behaviors, the movements and things that you make. Um, sometimes they become very. We call it waxy flexibility. So imagine if your body was made out of wax, okay? And we take the person and we put their arm up like this. They'll hold that position for hours. Stay just like that. Sort of like we like a you know Gumby doll or something where you kind of form them into a shape, you know, and they'll stay that way. It's really kind of fascinating. Um, they posture, which is sort of like that, but not to that bad a degree. It's like they do that on their own. Uh, they grimace a lot of times. They have some stereotyped movements where they just, you know, over and over again they do the same thing over and over again. Um, and that's called the catatonic type of stuff. <coughs> and then there's some other, you know, residual and differentiation. I won't go into all that. Interesting thing about this, by the way, it's not something, you might think, well, is it just in America this happens? It's not. It's 1% of the population anywhere in the world. North, south, hot, cold, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter your race, it's 1%. So it's kind of an interesting thing to think about. I always, when I, in my head, I always think about, now, why, why do these illnesses still exist? I mean. You know, I can't imagine through the years, I don't know why somebody with schizophrenia would have survived back in the days where, you know, we were running around hunting for lions or whatever, or beasts to kill and eat, you know. Somebody with schizophrenia, I don't think it would help you much. And, you know, a lot of these things, you know, we talk about, like we talked about with panic disorder, for instance, that's a normal part of your brain that just is kind of going haywire, okay. And sometimes you might think, well, somebody who's extremely anxious, maybe that was a good thing because maybe they survived when the other folks weren't as attuned to their environment and they got eaten by lions, right? Because the, the, the anxious person, they were really attuned to their environment and they were looking around all over the place and they survived. I don't know why. Schizophrenia must have some, it, it wouldn't exist at 1% of the population over the years like this for, some, for no reason. So there's some reason it has continued to exist and I'm not sure what it is. Um, but, but, it's, but just so you know, it's 1%. It's not uh, um, different depending on where you go. We think it's a neurodevelopmental thing. What does that mean? Well, you know, you guys know how, like, when you're a baby, you know, all of your body, everything starts out really in these little few cells, and then it kind of develops and grows. The brain does the same thing, you know. It starts out as a few cells, and then it starts to grow. And these nerve cells, as they develop, as they get bigger and bigger, they kind of sprout, sort of like plants, I guess, in your garden. You know, they sprout, and they grow. They, they, they kind of know, this is interesting, but they kind of are programmed to go to a certain spot and stop and become a nerve cell to run my left arm or something, okay, or a bunch of nerve cells to run my left arm. We think that some of these, what we found is that there's, the, there's too much in some folks with schizophrenia, there's too, much nerve, too many nerve cells in, in a deeper part of the brain and not enough out here in the frontal part of the brain. So we think that something is happening. Either they're not developing like they should out to where they should, they're stopping short, or the brain is sometimes, you know, during adolescence and during these late teen years, 
there is a lot of pruning, you know, sort of trimming the hedges kind of, that your grain does, and that's normal. And when, maybe that process is going awry somehow. Maybe uh, Edward Scissor's hands is getting kind of crazy and he's kind of cutting down to the quick, you know, and there's the, you know, the nerve cells are getting kind of hacked back when they shouldn't be. Um, because that might explain, too, why, the, why it's kicking in at that age, you know, at that young age. Um, in essence, though, I mean, we don't know, like, we don't know what, we have those theories.